coming up in today's wino, find out why breaking out a bottle of bubbly isn't just for weddings and New Year's. We're showing you how letting the French favorite flow could add a little sparkle to your everyday. We'll be right back. Champagne was a region long before it was a sparkling wine born in the crossroads of northern Europe. The French native is usually saved for special occasions, but you don't have to be rich or ringing in the new year to raise your flute. In today's Wine O segment, Central Valley Today's Moni Sultani shows us that popping the cork is reason enough to celebrate. From the prestigious Dom Perignon to the infamous Cristal, you don't have to be royalty to pop the bubbly. In fact, it could be as simple as Blanc de Noir and Blanc de Blanc, or black and white. This edition of Wino brings us to the chef's table where we find a champagne lifestyle is not just for the rich and famous. The chef's table executive chef Malachi Harlan is here to help us pair the decadent drink. Hello, Chef Malachi. Good morning, how are we doing? Good morning, and who knew that champagne could be paired with so many different things? Just about everything, in fact. That's the, the wonderful thing about it. Um, we have a couple great dishes that we serve here at the restaurant that we're going to be uh, pairing. The first course op option would be our corn soup, and that's served with a white corn, potato, and bacon hash that you see sauteed in the middle. Um, as an entree selection, we have California Red Snapper Filet served with an artichoke sauce and uh, topped with some fresh basil from our herb garden. And then uh, lastly, can't forget, we have uh, a uh, boysenberry sorbet that we make here in-house. And I imagine that this sorbet uh, goes so wonderfully with the champagne. It, it seems to taste better as the courses go along. I bet it does after a couple glasses especially. All right, well we're now we're going to actually pair and taste all three of these, so thank you. And the Chef's Table Cellar Director, Steve Kellenberger, is here to help us get to the bottom of the bubbly. It doesn't get much better than this. Let's talk about the champagne you picked to pair. We have some Fentanyl Prosecco, which is an Italian sparkling wine from the Venezia region. It is generally lightly sweet, and this one is not as sweet as some, but it has good acidity, light sweetness. And so this champagne can go with all three of the dishes Abs that we have here? Absolutely. We have this beautiful uh, corn soup here, it's white corn, and it's really on the sweet side with the savory components underneath it, but the light sweetness goes great with it. I gotta taste this while you, while yeah. you move on. Let me just ask you a quick question. What do you need to know about pairing champagne with three dishes? Is there anything in particular you need to know? Well, you need to know the acidity to it and you need to know the sweetness to it. So sweet, sweet wines, of course, are gonna go better with sweet, sweeter dishes or spicy dishes, and then in those crisp wines, will go better with some of the heavier ones. Like this one, this one's a little bit heavier, but we have the good acidity in it, so the nice cream sauce will go well. This was mm -hmm. perfect together. So t tell mm -hmm. us about the entree. Um, so here we have an artichoke sauce, but you have the savory basil. The artichoke itself is kind of savory. You have some tomatoes and so forth underneath. And so you have the combination of the savory and sweet once again, which will go here nicely. Mm -hmm. And then you have the exact same champagne to go with the dessert. Absolutely. And so you have the real sweet dessert here. You could almost pour the champagne right into there. Would it be weird if I did that? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's like just oh, do it right okay. there. Just do it oh, right no, there I like have that. to press. So, and what does that do by putting them together like that? Well, you're combining your sweetness with your acidity right there. I'm going to take a big scoop on this one. Mmm. Mm. Steve, that's great. And the best part about this is Sometimes if you think you have to get a bottle of champagne, then you got to get a bottle of wine, then you have to get some port, but you could get one bottle of champagne to go through the entire the meal. The whole dinner. The whole dinner. Very easily done. And we keep saying champagne, but let's talk a little bit about champagne versus sparkling wine. What's Which the difference? Which is a, a real good point. This one is a sparkling wine because it doesn't come from the champagne region of France. And there's been a general agreement worldwide that only wines from champagne will be called champagne and everything else is sparkling wine. And there are some people that kind of fool with the rule. But if it is a sparkling wine from California, they're mostly made in the Method Traditionnelle, which is uh, the way they make champagne. And it's a whole process where they're putting the sugar and yeast and yeast nutrients into a bottle, and they do a second fermentation in the bottle, which gives the champagne or sparkling wine its bubbles. Once again, we have the sparkling wine, which is from Italy. They also have Moscato Dastis, you know, the nice real sweet ones. We have uh, over here behind us, we have several traditional champagnes. We have also a Bruschetto de Chi, which is another Italian sparkling wine, but it is a red sparkling wine and very, very sweet. Most champagnes are made with Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier. Say that again, Meunier. Meunier. 
Okay, so those are the three main grapes that they're the made three from. Main grapes. So I take away from that, mm -hmm. Steve, if you go to a restaurant and the bartender says to you, do you want champagne or sparkling wine, there's probably a difference in uh, price and quality maybe or not? Well, especially now the euro's so high, mm -hmm. you, know, <laughs> yeah. the, you know, especially now because, you know, they generally are. But you, there are some reasonably priced champagnes that are very good for their, their value. But there are also other French sparkling wines that aren't from Champagne. When it comes to Champagne and sparkling wines, the variety is just as different as wines. Exactly right. Well, uh, on that note, Steve, I'm sure if people come to the chef's table, they have a bunch of questions about Champagne and they want to do some pairings, you're going to help them? I'm going to help them. It's my job. Cheers to that. Cheers. All right. Cheers. We'll bring you back a bottle, Alex. <laughs> or at least a sip. <laughs> for some reason, for some reason, I'm thirsty.